One of the biggest mistakes you can make on the twin flame journey is to make this journey about another person, which is obviously very, very easy to do. And I can't really say it's a mistake because it's all just divinely guided and the way it's supposed to be. It does cause a lot of suffering, but suffering is also the gateway to your ascension. But at a certain point on the journey, you begin to take your power back as you start to make this journey about what it's truly about, which is transcending the dualistic mind and moving from mind into heart, into your sacred heart. And so what starts off on this journey as what appears to be a very romantic connection quickly turns south, spiraling you into a dark night of the soul and you're probably going through or had gone through energetic openings and obviously a ton of synchronicity and of course obsessive thinking which is completely bizarre and no one really understands what it's like unless they've experienced it so it's not like you can talk to a lot of people about this because no one's really going to understand what is happening you're still trying to make sense of what is happening and what's happening is you're being activated and your ego is beginning to dissolve your ego is going to latch on, the mind is going to latch on, the egoic mind, to objects outside of itself in order to provide a sense of safety or comfort and to, to soothe the suffering. And this has been happening your whole life, not necessarily just with your twin flame, but when you meet your twin flame, your egoic mind's number one object of attention in order to soothe your suffering is your twin flame and of course this is understandable you've just met your soul in another body and there's a sense of home and there's a sense of familiarity and instant recognition that you have and then just gets ripped away out of the blue with no warning sending you into a spiral of dark night of the soul and so it's reasonable to understand why the egoic mind would want to continuously focus on that external person that other person as the solution to your suffering and what's worse is 99.9% .9 of the twin flame teachings out there will have you focusing on this connection as if it's a romantic connection or if it's a, like a connection with another soulmate or something like that and that couldn't be further from the truth because this is not a soulmate connection and it's nothing like a soulmate connection it's not even a quote-unquote connection a connection implies that there's two that can come together to connect and that's not the case this is one you've always been one you have an eternal unconnection with this person there's never not been oneness and that's what this journey is about. It's a journey to oneness. It's the journey from your egoic mind into your eternal divine presence. The aspect of your being that transcends duality and transcends the mind and transcends this 3D world of form. But on this journey, especially at the beginning, you're overly focused on the 3D world of form, a.k.a. your twin flame, the other person in this storyline that you are now feeling trapped in. And the narrative that's being told by 99.9% .9 of the twin flame teachings out there is to focus in on this other person 
because of because this person when they come back if they come back they're going to complete you they're going to make you feel whole you're going to feel safe you're going to finally be chosen you're going to be lovable you're going to be good enough you're going to be worthy and regardless of what actions words or deeds that are happening in relation to your twin flame these teachings out there will still have you focusing all of your energy and all of your awareness and all your attention on this other person and that only induces more suffering because what this journey is about is about turning the mirror back on yourself and coming home to yourself and so your mirror soul your twin flame is here to mirror to you every place that you've been running from yourself Because that's exactly what you're doing when you're chasing external validation or approval or love or some feeling of wholeness or completeness or being good enough outside of yourself, specifically and especially in your twin flame. If you're looking for that person to come back into your life in order to make you feel whole and complete, But this also translates into all other areas of your life, which also begin to unravel, dismantle, dissolve, so that you can be reborn. Because any place in your life that you're seeking that external validation is going to crumble on this journey. So whether that be through money or success or achievements or um, material goods, life circumstances, whatever... Any place that your conditioning and beliefs have been built on lack, fear, scarcity, a sense of unworthiness, and you've been operating from those as your underlying motivation, all of that will begin to unravel in your experience as you continue to come home to yourself deeper and deeper into yourself so your twin flame will always reflect back to you how me how how deeply you have met yourself and up until this point if you've primarily met yourself with a sense of self-betrayal or self-abandonment or lack of self-love and lack of acceptance and lack of worthiness Who better than your own soul, a.k.a. your twin flame, to reflect back to you every place that you're running from your own soul, your own soul essence. And so they're going to mirror back to you not only the love that's inside you, but also all the shadows, all the places that you've been running from love running from yourself as love you will begin to really shift this journey and benefit from it when you can shift your perception and begin to see your twin flame as a metaphor for your soul's ascension and so what do i mean by that your twin flame represents your incessant seeking energy in order to validate yourself and feel lovable or worthy which gets amplified also the need to know the need to figure everything out gets amplified this feeling out of control which is very fear-based is why you're constantly seeking information on what's going on, what's happening, what are they doing, what are they up to, are they coming back, will they come back, all of those kind of things. Desperate energy, trying to figure it out, trying to control or manipulate circumstances or situations or outcomes. Really impressing your egoic will on the situation. This journey is about surrendering egoic will and moving into divine will. This is about releasing the need to know. This is about moving into the unknown. 
This is about being able to release all egoic control and completely surrender and fully come home to your own heart and feel whole and complete within yourself. So when you look at all of the tendencies that are being amplified and kind of extracted from you during this process, all of that is bubbling up and it's to show you that that is not the way. That none of that is the way. There's only one way. And that way is home to your own heart. And all roads eventually will lead you home. But it's just a matter of how long do you want to take the detour. Because the detour is extremely painful and filled with a lot of suffering. So when you begin to see your twin flame as the ultimate spiritual teacher that they are for your own soul ascension journey you begin to experience the peace and the ease and the flow and the abundance as you be- begin to come home to yourself and you set yourself free from the prison from the mental prison that you've been trapped in. If you would like support on your journey and you're ready to fully claim your divine sovereignty as a divinely worthy woman, I invite you to check out Embody the Empress, which is my divine feminine monthly immersion. You can check out all the details in the caption below this video. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.